Johnny, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Not too bad. Um, I wanted to start off and ask you, I mean, you know, I, I, I would understand, you know, when you're playing a, a real life person like Nicky Winton, you obviously have, you know, archival footage, documentary footage, you can even meet the person. But when you're playing the younger version of another actor, do you find you kind of get in your head about matching their sort of, I don't know, their voice and their sort of physical kind of traits? I mean, even though you're playing a younger version of them, like, or yeah. how does it work? Yeah, um, absolutely. I think I think it's really important um, that the audience is allowed to really believe that this is the same person, you know, for the story to work, um, so for the story to land and have an impact. It, uh, those two characters can't be sort of incongruously jumping from one to the other. So, um, And because the film it doesn't kind of go from my story to his, it, it starts with him and then goes to me, you know, it goes back and forth. Um, so, I, you know, I was I was watching um, uh, Anthony's films, I was listening to his voice, and uh, when he was filming his scenes, I'd go on set and, and watch him and try and pick up mannerisms and um, uh, things that are unique to him, not just Nicky, because um, in, in the end, you know, we have to meet in the middle somewhere, and obviously and then there isn't much footage of Nikki at all but there's certainly n not really any from the 30s when I was playing him so the best I could do was to read the books and learn about what was going on and um, uh, learn what his thinking Nikki's thinking was but then also to try and you know channel channel Anthony at the same time yeah it's just, I would imagine that's a pretty tough balancing act just out of curiosity, I mean, what films did you watch of uh, Anthony's? Like, was it like The Bounty? Like, was it a similar kind of age period, or what was it? Like? Oh, well, um, uh, oh god, now I'm on the spot. Not, not, Sorry. not Silence of the Lambs. Um, there's, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, it was a good chance to watch. I watched The Remains of the Day, um, which oh. is beautiful. I think I was anything. I was trying to find things where because Nikki has this kind of. Um, he he's you know he shrugs off um praise and uh he's yeah. he's so humble so i wanted things um uh there's a there's a beautiful film called i think it's called the fastest indian uh oh yeah it's called that's a lovely film um i watched that um and then really the mo the most helpful thing was watching him film you know play playing nikki obviously um uh and and he you know he he he's playing a character but he's um his presence is so strong and i think when when people are so familiar with um you know he's he's very uh, confident in himself anthony and and so every character he plays is a bit anthony hopkins so it was nice to kind of um yeah try and channel a bit of him did you get to play with him at all? Because I mean, I know you're a musician and he's a musician as well. Did the series get to jam a little bit or do no, anything like that? Sadly, not. No, there weren't any. Um, there weren't any pianos where we were filming. But um, uh, no, sadly not. Sadly not. Um, in terms of, I suppose, finding the kind of the center of Nicky Winton, you kind of touched on it there already. But the idea of this sort of like radical humility about him that he just, as you say, shrugged it all off. Um, I mean. <laughs> You know, as an actor, obviously, you're trying to kind of get inside a person's mind or and try to or at least try to understand their motivations. Mm. What was the, I suppose, the most surprising thing you took away about Nicky Winton now that you've played him and now that you're kind of on the press tour for it? Um, I suppose, you know, I think there was a, he had a stubbornness that... Um, was very useful uh in in the things that he was trying to do and um it's nice now having seen the film to see that in 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 the scenes with anthony as well and you you know i love the stuff between him and his wife where there's you know she wants to declutter the house and um and you you can kind of imagine um the, the the type of kind of hoarder he is because he needs to keep records and you never know what's going to come in useful and I love the um, the detail of the button um, but I think he was a resourceful person and he was um, stubborn uh, but hugely principled and I think these you know it's just like simple um, uh, 
you know decent traits that that saw through this incredible uh act of bravery and and um ingenious kind of manipulating of the system to to do this amazing act of good so yeah it, it's i think the the message of the film for me is about how simple decency i think he talks about it on those terms as well um just we need to keep hold of these very 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 simple things and kindness and looking around and seeing who we can help um and and he lived by those rules for his whole life and and did a tremendous amount of good but did this incredible thing in 1938-39 um that he almost not quite not forgot about but he he pushed it under the carpet partly out of um uh, a sense of dread and shame because of the last train that he tried to organize which got yeah. got lost got um didn't leave um and the sadness around that i think it was too too harrowing to even kind of think about for for years so um but he was just essentially he was just a good a good person can i ask is there anyone in the audience tonight who owes their life to nicholas winton 